So let's talk more about load sequencing. What do we mean by load sequencing and why is it important? In 2009, ASME published the book Pipe Stress Engineering by L.C. Pang and Alvin Pang, which stated that the analysis method used by many pipe stress software packages for combining nonlinear loads was incorrect and that the only valid method was used by programs like Autopipe. This book mentions that there are three approaches to handling nonlinear analysis. A general straightforward approach that is used by many general purpose FEA programs, the algebraic subtraction, which our competitors use, and the operating condition approach, which Autopipe uses. The authors only recommend the operating condition method like Autopipes because it meets the code philosophy and requirements, where the other two methods have flaws. The total load approach, or the algebraic subtraction method, doesn't understand boundary conditions and how the bearing force can change with the direction of the pipe movement, which can possibly double the stress and load range. It's preferable to perform an incremental analysis, as is done in Autopipe, to ensure no extreme load is overlooked. So again, remember the total load approach doesn't understand boundary conditions. For example, the magnitude of the friction force as the pipe returns to ambient conditions after an operating condition will be the same magnitude, but in the reverse direction, and this could possibly double the stress and load range. The incremental analysis that's done in Autopipe ensures that no extreme load is overlooked. So let's explain in a bit more detail what incremental analysis or load sequencing is. In a nonlinear analysis, the sequence of the loads is very important. The principle of superposition doesn't apply in a nonlinear analysis. Therefore, the starting point for a load case is important to be aware of. This shows the default load sequencing in Autopipe. Gravity is analyzed with no initial state. Thermal load cases are analyzed with gravity as the initial state. Pressure load cases are analyzed with the corresponding thermal load case as the initial state. And occasional load cases are analyzed with gravity as the initial load case. It's possible to change this and have the occasional load follow the thermal, but this is the default sequencing. So let's look at an example to see in detail what's going on. Assuming the default load sequencing shown on the right, here we are looking down the pipe inside its guided support resting on the beam with gravity applied. The 0.2 inch gap is shown on each side. To simplify this example, we're ignoring pressure. First, the gravity load case is applied resulting in zero movement, so zero forces. So the position of the pipe is now the end position of the gravity load case, and this is the initial position for the thermal load case. Next, the thermal load is applied with the end position of the gravity load case as the initial position for thermal. Add in the thermal load and the pipe moves mainly axially, but also 0.2 inches in the negative Z direction up to the stop of the support. The gap is fully closed and this applies a force of 232 pounds. This is combination GRT1. So the position of the pipe is now the end position of the thermal load case and the initial position for the occasional load case. Next, the occasional load is applied, again with the end position of the thermal load case as the initial position here. Now we apply the occasional load. The pipe moves away from the stop and the force is removed. It moves in the positive Z direction by 0 0.306 inches. Notice that there's no horizontal support reaction from the thermal and the occasional as the pipe doesn't touch the support. This combination is GRT1E1. The net change in position is a positive 0.106 inches in the Z direction. This is taking the negative 0.2 inches from thermal movement and the positive 0 0.306 inches from occasional earthquake movement. This is the correct consistent result. So let's start again, but this time assume the occasional load occurs before temperature, right after gravity. The pipe moves 0.306 inches right through the support guide 
with a force of 232 pounds showing. How can this be possible unless the support breaks? But this is what happens if the inconsistent combination GRE1 is created in Autopipe because the program settings are technically still set to tell the program that the occasional load is occurring after the temperature load. This shows what happens when the algebraic summation approach is used. It can yield inaccurate results. So if we try that again, but this time, we also change the default sequence, setting gravity as the initial state for occasional loads. Adding the occasional load again results in a large force of 450 pounds and the correct displacement of 0.2 inches in the positive Z direction, where the support stops the pipe from moving further. The combination GRE1 now becomes consistent. So using the wrong sequence in this case resulted in a smaller support reaction being reported and a larger displacement than was physically possible. Inconsistent results might not always be this dramatic where the pipe is moving past the support gap, but they can still be inconsistent without such obvious issues occurring. Thank you for joining the presentation portion of the Autopipe Nonlinear Analysis Using Load Sequencing training class. In the next video, we will go through a workbook example. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.